Greetings, this is Atma Boda. Today is January 8th, 2022. The title of today's podcast is Purity is Immortal, Impure is Temporary. This is podcast number 43. Let's begin. Many find it hard to believe that a pure motive exists or that it is possible to achieve such a thing. What is this strange concept of a pure motive, they might ask. Many people are unable to comprehend that there can be a motive that is not self-serving. The fact is that most people's motives are based on their own personal desires and what they want to accomplish in their lives. However, to have a pure motive means that you want to accomplish something based on upon love or higher inspiration or realization. When you regard that the best in you is also in everyone else, you naturally want others to experience the best in them so that they too can see the best in everyone else. You can't see the best in everyone if you can't first see the best in you. Enlightenment is not about observing. That is just called being conscious. Most people are really confused about what enlightenment even means. When you have reached such a state that you are shining or radiating love and truth all the time, then this is enlightenment. The fact is that many people don't even know what is love, and of those that do know love, hardly any can differentiate the experience of love from truth or be able to recognize truth when they see it. Thus, very few people are actually enlightened. Most of those who claim to be such are not. It is not a heart state, but when your mind is liberated by being immersed in the absolute truth. Quote, love under will, unquote, is inferior to love under truth. Through philosophy, we can conceptualize the unfathomable and create a framework of perspective that can help things make more sense and become conducive to your illumination. There is no thought that you can think that is beyond the pool of available thoughts that is intended for you. Free will exists. If you were to tell an artist or a writer or a musician that free will doesn't exist, they would laugh in your face. Their entire livelihood is based upon the concept of free will and having original ideas. Because unoriginal ideas and unoriginal music are not marketable and cannot be successful. To claim that the creative expression is not free is the claim that creative people are just some kind of advanced robots. There is that which makes us an individual. As an individual, we can choose to conform to something external, or we can apply additional effort and be stubbornly independent and refuse to be affected or influenced by anything external. To do this is not by being passive, but by being assertive, not giving in. If free will doesn't exist, then we wouldn't have the choice to be independent. Perhaps Sam Harris would think it would be impossible to be independent and have an impenetrable mind unaffected by the ups and downs of life, but instead being a perpetual state of bliss and love. People don't really have free will until they obtain an impenetrable mind. Having an impenetrable mind is not possible without immersing your mind with the absolute truth. Artists, musicians, and writers can have bursts of this inspiration. Those who are permanently enlightened have the same kind of inspiration, but instead of it being a burst, it is like a raging luminous waterfall that doesn't end. If you could be high all the time and have improved cognitive faculty, wouldn't you want that? Especially if there are no side effects and the effect is purely healthy and beneficial, you would want that. Yes? Instead of by manufacturing a drug, we can illuminate a philosophy whereby when people understand it, it's like having an infinite supply of this wondrous experience. The preparation to receive this involves removing self-limiting beliefs. This is why this philosophy is written and why these podcasts exist. It is to correct 
wrong assumptions about the nature of ultimate reality. What people refer to as the ego always wants to be right. It clings to the attachment of who you think you are. It can resist change, even if it is an empowering and expansive change. This is why many masters refuse students. It requires a very deep and earnest motivation in the aspirant. It is a lifestyle choice. It becomes the entire focus of your life. Being the best in everything is better than being everything. This is a core concept that should be ingrained in everyone if they want to be next level human. This is the crooks. Balance is not what the sun does. As for me, I'd rather be like the sun. The sun shines. It doesn't try to balance itself with its environment. It is an assertive force, not a passive one. The sun is the closest thing to enlightenment that we can see in nature as far as biological phenomenon. Aspire to have an adaptive, impenetrable mind of equanimity. Will alone is weak. If your will does not have the full force of truth behind it, it is inferior. Be more. Thus concludes the written portion of this podcast. So let's just unpack what we've talked about here. Purity is immortal. Impure is temporary. What is purity? Purity is when you go to the core of your being, the part of you that is unlimited. That is the part of you that is pure. The part of you that has its ups and downs and can get angry or feel negative or have bad moods. The part of you that is imperfect. The part of you that is struggling. Those are not the pure you. The pure you is beyond all of that. It is the most powerful aspect of your nature. When you feel complete and satisfied, that is you coming from your place of purity. If you feel incomplete, like you need something in order to feel complete, then that is not coming from a place of purity. Commonly, most people, when they have goals, they have goals because they feel that they are not complete unless they accomplish those goals. And so you can say that many of those goals can be coming from a place of desire. And that's not to say that there's not a time and a place for that. Certainly, it's better to desire a happy future for your family than to, than to have a desire that's purely selfish. But the ultimate selfishness is with a capital S, not a lowercase s, because there is something within you called the self that is your greater potential. And when you prioritize that aspect of you, then yes, that selfishness is good because that selfishness also benefits everyone else. But now we're just playing with words. I think most people realize that when we talk about selfish, that's just someone that is putting number one first and is not caring too much about others, which is fine. I mean, we're not here to judge anybody and everyone is on a different place on their path. In fact, many politicians today, they put number one first, they put their family first. So really, this is a pretty common situation right now that we have. But just to be clear, the purpose of these podcasts is not to make you into some kind of a saint. I mean, let's be realistic. Our minds, we like to have fun. We like to do things that interest us. And that's perfectly fine. That's why we have minds. That's why we have bodies. We should be enjoying ourselves. That's normal. That's natural. These podcasts are not about telling you what you should or shouldn't do. It's about showing you that there is something even better than you imagined that there is something that adds to your life and doesn't take it away. Something that removes your limits instead of placing limitations upon you. There is no rules here. This, this isn't some strict monk order of austerity whereby you have to follow very narrow restrictions. Otherwise the path to heaven remains closed for you. No, this is not a religion like that. This is very simple. It's a philosophy. It's a philosophy of empowerment. It's a philosophy of opening your mind, freeing your mind and being who you were born to be accessing your purest potential by incorporating this philosophy of unlimitlessness 
you can be more pure, but pure in a good way, not in some kind of prudish, judgmental way. No, be, definitely not. I know some paths require surrender. Surrender, in my mind, is a dirty word. I never want to surrender to anyone or anything, and I don't expect you or anyone else to surrender either. Surrender is not necessary. In fact, I don't recommend it. I certainly don't surrender. Some people might be confused by that statement. They would say, oh, what, you can't even surrender to God? What's wrong with surrendering to God? My response to that is, well, if you feel comfortable surrendering to God and that feels what's natural to you, you keep doing you. You keep doing what's natural to you. As for a requirement for enlightenment, no, surrender is not a requirement for enlightenment. There are other words that are better, in my opinion, than that. Symbiosis, union, that is not a situation whereby you're subjugated by something else, but in fact, you are on equal terms in that you are united as one, like a partnership, like being on the same team or being in the same family, but not the kind of family out there that I know exists where you have overbearing, controlling parents that try to manipulate you and control your every move. No, that's a human characteristic and certainly not a characteristic of the highest perspective. The highest perspective, there is no subjugation, there is no control, free will is respected, and higher nature is just waiting to help you. Earlier I said, there is no thought that you can think that is beyond the pool of available thoughts that is intended for you. Now that is a good thing. That means higher nature makes sure that you are safe. It also makes sure that no malicious entity or adversarial actors out there can operate beyond the purview of the highest ultimate truth. There is nothing that can exist on earth that isn't already accounted for in terms of this grand unfolding plan that's happening right now. It's kind of like God has a cheat code over Lex Luthor. He knows Lex Luthor's plans. I'm being hypothetical here, of course, but just imagine that there's an arch villain out there that's trying to dominate and subjugate humans. Well, guess what? Every single thought that entity or entities can think is controlled. There's a set pool of ideas that they can draw upon and all of them lead to one outcome. And that outcome is the enlightenment of all of humanity. I mean, that's an inevitable conclusion. Nothing can stop that. So those that are worried about that, or you're coming from a place of fear and there's some, some anxiety about the future and what the future holds, don't worry because everything is really, everything has been taken uh, care of. Everything's been accounted for. There's no possibility of anything bad happening that could possibly prevent this global awakening that is beginning now. It's happening and nothing can stop it. And that's just so beautiful. Now, I mentioned earlier that people don't really have free will until they have an impenetrable mind. And what I mean by that is until you're coming from the most empowered place, your life is going to be less than ideal, okay? And higher nature wants to make sure that everyone can find their way to liberation. And then once you do cross that threshold of illumination, then there's a whole other spectrum of entertainment that begins. And when I say entertainment, you might say, well, what do you mean entertainment? You can say it's kind of an inside cosmic joke that people are unaware of this inside joke because they're trapped in their minds and they don't see the bigger picture. And that's perfectly fine. When we say impurity is temporary, that just simply means that life for most is an illusion. And what are illusions but temporary things? You might say, well, my life has lots of pain in it. Pain doesn't feel like an illusion. 
I totally have compassion and empathy for you if you're listening to this and you are experiencing pain in your life. I would suggest that it doesn't hurt to come from an optimistic perspective and try to imagine that the pain you feel is a very realistic illusion. In Brazil, there is a rainforest tribe where they have a coming of age ritual with bullet ants. You can find videos about this on YouTube. Bullet ants have the most painful sting or one of the most painful stings of any insect species and perhaps more painful than any venom from any animal. Just the sting of one bullet ant is excruciatingly painful. And yet to pass this ritual, you need to put on a mitt with many of these bullet ants in this mitt and your hand goes in there and you get stung so many times and you have to endure it for a full five minutes to pass the ritual for tribe members in order to complete the whole thing they've got to do this like 20 times westerners have tried to do this and you can see on youtube how painful that is and some just cannot do it they have got to they pull off the mitt right away they can't wait the full five minutes but according to their culture you need to be able to get past that pain in order to come out the other side as a man. Somehow they learn to conquer this pain. So also can you find a way to conquer your own pain? And of course, we also have medicine. Western medicine is there to help ease your suffering. Certainly on the highest level, it's not about suffering and there is no desire to make other people suffer or make suffering a requirement for these higher experiences. But just imagine if you could be high all the time and feel intense bliss and ecstasy without even needing drugs or anything like that, but have it be completely natural and healthy and be able to live your life in such a state of pleasure in every moment. Everyone would want that. And this is your birthright. The only reason you're not experiencing this right now is just because your mind has is believing self-limiting beliefs and is you're trapped in your mind. And when you can incorporate certain higher truths and principles, your life becomes more in alignment with this greater higher nature. And when this happens, naturally, the other benefits of higher truth is going to come into your life. Those being more love, bliss, and having an equanimity of mind. And one of the biggest core philosophies is to see the best in everyone and everything. And it may be difficult to do that in the beginning, but to have that be your goal to be able to see the best in people to see the best in situations, then you're going to put yourself in a mindset, not only that will help you spiritually, but will help you materially because all the most successful entrepreneurs and businessmen who've attained high levels of wealth and material power, they all without exception come from that place of belief and in seeing the possibilities and being stubborn Instead of looking at the glass as half empty, they look at the glass as half full. Where other people see problems, they see opportunities. And you can be like that too. And having a community helps also. So feel free to visit divinity.com. There's some links there to the uh, Reddit sub, as well as the Discord chat. And over time, these things will become more active because having a community of fellowship of like-minded people that also share the same ideals of wanting to live life coming from the heart and experiencing love and experiencing the bliss of truth. I mean, what's not to like about that and not having any set rules, but having this be experiential and learn as you go. This is Atma Boda signing off until tomorrow. You guys have a fantastic time.